cables, cords, splitters, switchers, all of those wires that you use to connect up your components or your gadgets either at home or at work or in the car, that whole awesome tangle of stuff behind your TV. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty awesome. But as much as I love that stuff, I'm not here to talk with you about the difference between uh, BNC connectors and coaxial connectors. There's not much of a difference there, by the way. Um, I'm not here to talk with you about uh, S-Video to HDMI adapters. No, instead, I want to talk a little more philosophically about the idea of wires. I don't know, maybe growing up as a middle child had something to do with it, but I've always been fascinated with wires. Uh, in part because, like a lot of middle children will tell you, I'm used to being that overlooked part in the middle. But I'm used to, <laughs> used to being that long drive between home and Disneyland. But without that middle part, without that in-between connection, you'd never get there. And that's the great thing about wires. Whether it's data or music or people, wires are what gets you from where you are to where you're going. Without wires, your TV stereo and Blu-ray player would just be a TV stereo and Blu-ray player. On their own, they're fairly useless, but with the right wires, you've got a home entertainment system. It's when you connect them together that something special happens. The uh, things themselves are like a Mardi Gras floats, but wires make it a parade. Wires can take things and turn them into experiences, and experiences are what make up what we call the human experience. Uh, in fact, this idea of connecting one thing to another is a, really a fundamental part of what it means to be human. It's an intelligent extension of the natural world all around us and even within us, a world where virtual wires connect all things together. From the rivers and streams that connect large bodies of water that help themselves regulate their levels to the microscopic connections that send signals from the inside of your fingertip inside to your brain that keep us from burning ourselves. Wires take these disconnected things and create symbiotic relationships. We're all driven to connect things. That's why, as kids, we like playing with Tinker Toys or Legos or glue. As adults, a lot of us still play with the Tinker Toys, Legos, and glue, but <laughs> most people as adults do try and find some way to keep uh, the ideas of connecting and combining in their lives, whether it's finding all the parts to fix up an old car or tweaking the combination of ingredients in a recipe until it comes out just perfect. But life's not perfect. Sometimes things go wrong. <laughs> when they do, we try and fix them. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we fail, but most of the time, out there in the real world, there's so much gray area that we're never really sure if we've really fixed it or not. But with wires, when something goes wrong, there's a real clear objective of what you need to fix. And with the right pieces arranged in just the right way, the picture comes on the screen, or the sound comes through the speakers, and you have that that satisfaction and that closure of knowing that you succeeded. There's a logic to it. Even if you know you've got everything hooked up just right, but it's still not quite working, you can always just work your way through that chain of connections until you identify that broken link and replace it or, or fix it. It's like a physical manifestation of a, of a flow chart that's logically going from one decision to the next to the next to the next in a very logical way. But People aren't always logical, or at least sometimes, a lot of times you find yourself in a situation where there's a problem and the obvious logical solution just isn't available. So you go with what you've got. You dig through your box of wires and you search your experience of all the things you've done and read and seen. So you come up with at least part of a solution. You dig through some more and you find something else that kind of works with that first piece until eventually, problem solved. And that, that ability to search your experience and kind of pluck out just those couple of important disconnected things and then find a relationship between them, that's what a lot of people would call the very definition of the creative process. So respect your wires. A great way to do this is don't fold them and bend them and crush them and put a rubber band around them. Um, remember, there's actual metal wire inside those wires, and when you bend metal, you can you know, stress it and eventually break it. So show your wires some love. Show your wires some love. Appreciate their ability to make things happen. Thank them for giving you the opportunity to control at least a small part of your life. Uh, show them some gratitude for enabling you to make connections because whether we do it literally or metaphorically, when we make connections, we can create things that are truly greater than the sum of their parts. Having things is all about you. It's one-sided. It's all about taking. But connecting, especially with other people, with friends or family, goes both ways, and I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty awesome.